tired? Probably most of us are for some, if not all, of the time. <laughs> I mean, life is exhausting, isn't it? Might be that you've got a demanding job, a demanding family, or a demanding social life. All right, don't rub it in. And the chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably also do a little bit of cycling, and that can be pretty blooming tiring too. So there are many various different reasons why you might be feeling tired, but let's see if we can't do something about it. Get you feeling a little bit more sprightly. Let's get the big one out of the way first. There are plenty of medical reasons why you might be feeling tired. GPs see tired all the time patients regularly. And here in the UK, there's even a standard blood screen that they can request that tests for the most common medical reasons. Apparently it's called a TAT test tired all the time. It might show that you're low in iron or vitamin D or hypothyroid or many other different reasons. And some kind of medical diagnosis, a nice convenient explanation of why you're feeling tired that could then be treated with a course of supplements or medication might seem nice and convenient, but the chances are that that is probably not why you're feeling tired. Although you should always check, but that is definitely a good thing if it's not medical. So what are the common causes then? I'm going to run through them from the perspective of a cyclist because when it comes to general population, a lot of people feel tired because of a lack of exercise. But if you're already riding a bike, I suspect that is not the case. And speaking personally, while cycling is my answer to many of life's problems, when it comes to tiredness, riding more is definitely not the answer. Firstly, let's start with a fundamental about riding and training. When you train, you get worse. That's right, you put your body under stress, it breaks down, and then it takes time to rebuild stronger. Simple, but all too easy to forget. So here is a handy graph. Performance, up here, and then time, down there. So, you train and you get worse, okay? You then recover, your body rebuilds, and you get even stronger than before. Now, of course, if you then didn't ride your bike again, gradually over time, your performance would then drop off. This is, of course, a massive oversimplification, but essentially, when you get the balance right, you train, you recover, you train, you recover, you train, you recover, and you can see that over time, your performance increases. However, so, 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 so many of us fall into the training trap. Because you see, training makes us better, right? So, of course, you need to do more of it. The harder you train, the fitter you get. So you train hard and then you recover and you train hard, and then you recover and you train hard, and then you're feeling really tired, but you go, I can't miss a training day. So you recover a little bit and you train harder. And you can see over time, if you get the balance wrong and you don't recover enough, your performance decreases. And bear in mind as well, that not all training sessions have the same effect. So for example, two hours of zone two might be like that. However, an hour of high intensity intervals might be like that. So you can see that even if you only do four hours a week of high intensity intervals, you can still end up below the line. So you need to strike a balance between the type of training you're doing and also your recovery. Now it doesn't mean that you need to recover fully from every training session, but at some point you have to let your body catch up. Otherwise, all of it is worse than pointless. Not only will you be really tired, you'll also be slow. It's also really important to note that everyone responds differently to training and recovers at different speeds. So contrary to how it sometimes feels when you're looking at Strava, there are no medals for training. And I can tell you this with the benefit of hindsight that actually being good at training is a rubbish cycling superpower because what you actually want is to get fit off less training and then win proper medals or trophies. 
Look at that beauty. So forget about just always trying to ride 300 kilometers a week or copying the training that your friends or even your rivals are doing. Do what works for you. And if that means that you have to ride half the distance that everyone else is riding, well celebrate it, that's a good thing. You could have a social life as well. So how much training should you do and how much can you tolerate? Well, fortunately, your body will tell you if you listen to your heart. And I mean literally to your heart rate. Now you can go all fancy with a wearable like a whoop, but you can also go old school and simply just check your resting heart rate every morning when you wake up. If it's running a little bit high, it's a good sign that you're either getting tired or you're perhaps getting ill. You might need to back off. If I'm completely honest though, I used to find that a massive faff, so I never did it, which is I guess where wearables come into their own. For me though, what was far more of an alarm was suppressed heart rate when exercising, particularly high intensity work. So if your heart rate won't go up as high or as quickly as you'd expect, that's a really good sign that you're getting tired and you probably shouldn't be training hard or that you should actually just take a rest day. Unless of course you're getting towards the end of a big training block and you know that you've got a period of rest coming up where you can then let your body recover and bounce back. Ah, oh, it should take a rest day. Or if you are getting towards the end of a big training block, maybe you can still get the work done, but you know at least then that you've got a period of rest afterwards where you can then let your body bounce back. Ah. Oh. It is very, very easy to get into a state where you just keep cracking on, you're feeling tired, but you know how hard your favorite pro cyclist trains and you know how hard your mates are training because you can see it on Strava. But then over time, you're not just tired, but you're also potentially really damaging your health. Now you can, of course, improve and speed up your recovery through good sleep and good nutrition, although nutrition can be a double-edged sword. I don't think sleep can, unless I guess you're constantly late for work. So no, get more sleep, avoid alcohol, avoid screens in the evening, don't drink caffeine after lunch, and also keep your sleep hours regular. I mean, you know the drill, how to get good sleep. But nutrition, how is that a double-edged sword? Well, being really on it with what you eat, having good nutrition can, does allow you to train harder and recover faster. But having an iron grip on your nutrition can very quickly lead us to restrict foods. And that is potentially way worse than just eating total rubbish and having really crap nutrition. Having low energy availability, and by that I literally mean energy, like calories, will make you feel really tired. But if you keep on pushing, you can end up in a situation with really negative consequences and quite a serious condition. So it's called Red S, Relative Energy Deficiency in Sport. And it's a relatively recently categorized condition and it's definitely not widely enough known about. So chronic energy deficit, as we said, will leave you feeling really tired. But also over time, it can end up suppressing your immune system. So leaving you run down, getting ill all the time, and then potentially even worse than that, can lead to serious hormonal imbalances. So your thyroid hormones, growth hormones, sex hormones as well. So you'll feel really tired, you'll feel rubbish on the bike, you'll struggle to recover, and you won't be getting any. Now admittedly, if you're heavily into aerodynamics, you're probably not getting any anyway, but we can still see, jokes aside, that it is really serious. People can get really unwell from it, and it's painfully common too. So if you're gonna train, fuel. Carbs are essential to fuel your training and your recovery as well. If you're gonna train hard, you need to make sure your glycogen stores are topped up and worry about weight loss another day because it's just not that important. Lastly, let's talk about stress. Now this is a really common cause of fatigue in adults, but it's one that you're probably not likely to either realize or indeed you want to admit to. Now, I'm not gonna tell you how to deal with stress. There's an awful lot out there already on the subject. And heck, cycling is probably one of the best stress busters there is, but training hard as a way of dealing with stress is a bit of a ticking time bomb. Now, I say this as someone who isn't a huge fan of going for slow, 
stress dispersing bike rides but you've got to think that if you've got any kind of serious stress in your life that is going to be seriously impacting your recovery and therefore also your ability to go for hard bike rides do hard training sessions and no you are not immune to it no one is immune to stress and the effect of it Stress produces cortisol, just like training does actually, where the cortisol then breaks down your muscles so they can rebuild stronger. But the trouble with stress is that typically it's chronic. So the cortisol isn't released in helpful doses to allow you to improve, but it's there all the time where its effect can then be negative. Cortisol causes your muscles to break down, a bad thing, and also causes inflammation, also a bad thing and actually a bit of a buzzword at the minute often associated with woo-woo medicine crackpot diets and stupid supplements but increasingly it's also a big thing in proper medicine too where chronic inflammation has been linked to real nasties like cancer heart disease diabetes and many many more so whilst we can often feel like cycling and life are two distinct things i have my family and my job over here and then I have my cycling which is my fun and my release over here if you're riding a lot and particularly if you're training you have to see them as one and the same so why are you feeling tired well you tell me I mean literally tell us in the comment section down below what your experiences of tiredness and fatigue are what do you put it down to but just bear in mind those fundamentals of training recovery is when you get better training sessions make you worse get more sleep be aware of the implications of stress it will make you feel more tired and it has knock-on effects as well and then your nutrition fuel your training remember that energy deficit has both short and long-term consequences none of which are good with that in mind i'm going to go have something to eat and then a lie down